I'm going to talk today about tonal qualities in violins and bows. In making the Violin Shopping 101 and the Bow Shopping 101 videos, I found myself wanting to elaborate quite a bit about tone. Tone is the first thing you're going to experience when you hear a violin or bow. What exactly is tone? It's the quality of the sound. So if you're violin shopping or bow shopping and you play an instrument and you're not sure why you don't like it, you, you hear something, you can't put words to it, what I'm going to do in this talk here is try to give you a lot of vocabulary and ways to look at how to describe what you're hearing. Keep in mind that your gut instinct is always probably the best barometer of whether you resonate with the instrument or not and if you enjoy its tone or not. But we'll elaborate here so that you could feel more conversant about your choices of how to describe what you're hearing in the tone of violins and bows. So we're going to break this down into some categories. We're going to talk about harmonic frequencies, color, I love talking about texture and food, of course, and projection. Harmonic frequencies. Just like color, we only see perhaps pink, but it's a mixture of red and white. Every note that you play, even though it sounds like one note, is actually a combination of overtones. You're going to be testing out violins and bows and you will notice some are going to sound lower, some are going to sound higher, and some are going to have a nice full rich sound. And the, the instruments and bows that have a lower tubular sound, if you're looking at violins and they sound like violas, you're, you're what that instrument is doing is it's only projecting the lower overtones or if you were looking at color mixing it's the darker colors that are being mixed into that color. A high edgy sounding instrument or bow is producing the higher overtones but not the lower ones and so it sounds a little edgy and strident. When you have an instrument or a bow that freely produces the full overtones of each note from the deepest to the brightest, you'll really notice it in the tone. So this is a technical description of hearing what's going on when you've got darker sounding instruments or brighter sounding instruments and what we're looking for is something that has the whole spectrum. And you will notice this in the sound as you try instruments. You'll, you'll notice this. Our next category is color. Sometimes it's nice to step outside of, of just talking about sound all the time and use analogies. So we have pastel colors, opaque colors, and brilliant colors. Pastel colors are, are like powdery pink and baby blue. If you play a violin or a bow and it's kind of got that fluffy pink sound all the time, then you're not going to be able to pull out a darker sound of that violin. If it's, you know, no matter what you do to that violin, it always has this pink sound or it sounds fluffy or powdery, then that violin is not going to have a, a, a wide range of expression available to it. Opaque colors are are colors that just are dense and there's like no light shining through them. And I thought of this horrible analogy, bilious brown is just about as gross and as dense as you can think of. And you will find instruments and bows that kind of have this kind of dead thuddy quality to them. And that would be like an opaque color. Brilliant colors could be really any color but shown with dazzle and and bright, bright, shimmery um, 
sheen to it and depth in the color as well. I happen to live in a beautiful part of the country where we have amazing blue sparkling skies. You can have any color sparkle once again. And that's what we're looking for in a violin and bow, something that's really going to sparkle. Texture. There is satiny smooth, there is velvet, and then there's sandpaper. And you will find violins and bows that are going to play like sandpaper and they're going to be just kind of awkward and sound like sandpaper. Anyways, I love velvet. I also love satiny smooth and you might be able to find an instrument that can produce both of those depending on how you treat it. But you know, we're, we're just talking about overall tonal qualities and so this is another way to describe what you are hearing. I love using food, of course. I have, uh, there's a local restaurant here that has an amazing dessert called Death by Chocolate. And when you take one bite into this dessert, the, it's like a whole journey between the first bite, savoring it in your mouth, and swallowing it and and the experience the the taste changes as you're chewing it and it almost makes you swoon and the depth of it is so rich and the experience is is keeps you engaged because it's a changing quality as you chew it and then when you swallow it, it just feels wonderful couldn't you imagine a violin tone that would be that engaging? Now we're not talking about angel food cake or potato chips here, but you will hear instruments that might say, oh, that one, like the angel food cake, might remind you also of that pastel pink color we were talking about earlier. So food is another way you could describe tone if you're going for food. Projection. You probably know of somebody who, no matter how quietly they talk, they could whisper and you could still hear them a mile away. And then there's people who are just soft-spoken and it takes a lot for them to just get their voice out. Well, violins and bows are the same. You're going to find the whole gamut worth of variety of uh, projection. And because we are in a performing art, we do want to have something that projects. And I want to elaborate a little bit on this because some instruments and bows can be a little tricky. They might sound really wonderful and voluminous right around you. I like to use the example of uh, the Peanuts cartoon as a character named Pigpen and he always has a swirl of dirt around him. And some violins have like a sound that just is beautiful but it stays close to you. It doesn't project out into the audience. When you're trying violins and bows, at this point you'll need help. So either somebody will go stand far away, or you could listen to somebody else play the instrument to hear if the sound is carrying. I hope that these descriptive words give you more confidence in hearing instruments and bows and hearing their tonal differences. I have my own preferences, I'm, you know, it's a personal choice, but what I recommend people do is to look for a full range of harmonic frequencies, look for brilliant color, we want the violin to sparkle and have nice sheen to it, we'd like to have a nice satiny smooth or velvety sound to the texture. I'd love it to have that rich depth, like the death by chocolate dessert that I talked about, and an instrument that will project. Have a great shopping experience and also enjoy this information for just listening to any music in general, and it will just heighten your listening abilities when you're listening to music.